In a quiet district of Pennsylvania, Ryan Jones's grocery store was the heart of the neighborhood, with shelves stocked with fresh produce and the sweet aroma of freshly baked bread filling the air. The shop attracted people from all corners. On a crisp morning, as Ryan busied himself restocking jars of candies, a subtle movement caught his attention. In the aisle amidst the cereal and grain shelves, a small figure was trying to discreetly fill the pockets of her tattered coat. The girl, with disheveled hair and big, bright eyes, appeared to be around eight years old. She glanced furtively around, making sure no one saw her, and then grabbed a can of beans here, a chocolate bar there. Ryan, with his keen gaze, noticed that the little girl seemed thinner than usual for her age, with pale cheeks and dark circles under her eyes. His heart sank. At that moment, Mr. Ray, a regular customer, approached Ryan, whispering, Ryan, that girl is stealing. You should call the police or talk to her. But Ryan simply shook his head slowly and replied, I saw it, Mr. Ray, but look at her. She seems like she really needs that. Nevertheless, something in his expression revealed an internal struggle. Honesty was a cornerstone for Ryan, but compassion for the girl weighed heavier on his heart. Deciding to approach, he quietly walked towards her. However, before he could get close, the girl sensed his presence and looked up, locking eyes with Ryan. Her eyes widened, and for a moment, they both stared at each other. A tense silence filled the space between them, only interrupted by the soft tinkling of the front doorbell. Suddenly, the girl took a step back, dropped what she had in her hands, and hurriedly ran out of the store. Ryan didn't move. He stood there, watching the girl disappear around the corner with a lost and thoughtful look in his eyes. Days turned into weeks, and the little girl continued her visits to Ryan Jones's grocery store. She moved with a caution and precision that were surprising for someone her age, gliding through the aisles and concealing selected items under her coat or in a faded bag. Ryan watched her from his position behind the counter, often pretending to be distracted as he checked inventory or conversed with customers. He noticed that she had clear preferences, usually opting for practical and nutritious foods like whole grain bread, fruits, and occasionally a piece of cheese or meat. Anna, a longtime friend and regular customer, once whispered to Ryan, that girl is here again. Are you really going to let this continue? He shrugged, looking at the child in the canned goods aisle. Maybe she has her reasons, Anna. And I have mine for allowing it. However, on a cold and cloudy morning when the girl walked through the front door, Ryan felt it was time to engage. He approached slowly as she picked up a can of soup. Hi, he began gently, trying not to startle her. I've seen you here, you know. I just wanted to check if everything's okay. Do you need help? The girl looked at him, her big brown eyes filled with surprise and a hint of fear. She opened her mouth, trying to find words, but nothing came out. Ryan tried again, crouching down to her eye level. Where are your parents? Do they know you come here? She looked at her bag, took a deep breath, and in a trembling voice said, I can't say. Please, just let me go. Her eyes were pleading, and Ryan, realizing how deep her fear ran, nodded. Okay, but if you ever need help, know that you can count on me, all right? Without waiting for a response, the girl grabbed her bag and rushed out, leaving Ryan with more questions than before. He looked out the window, watching the fragile figure disappear into the morning mist, intrigued by the girl and her mysterious situation. Ryan decided the next day to keep a closer eye on her movements. While attending to customers, he maintained a casual demeanor but remained constantly vigilant, waiting for the moment she would appear. And like clockwork, there she was, timidly entering the grocery store. After gathering a few items, she left the store, and Ryan, donning his coat and putting on a hat, decided to follow her from a distance. The streets were bustling with people coming and going, making it easy for Ryan to blend in and maintain a discreet profile. She walked through alleys and side streets, increasingly moving away from the city's commercial center. Ryan noticed that she often glanced over her shoulder as if being pursued or fearing being seen. This only deepened his concern and curiosity. After nearly an hour of walking, the girl finally stopped in front of an old, weather-worn house. 
The peeling paint, dusty windows, and neglected garden told the story of abandonment and hardship. She hesitated for a moment, casting one more cautious glance around before entering. Ryan, hidden behind a nearby tree, watched closely. Moments later, a child's laughter echoed from the backyard of the house. Curious, he approached more closely and peeked through an opening in the wooden fence. There, playing with a skinny and sad-eyed puppy, was a boy, apparently younger than the girl. He laughed as he tried to get the little dog to chase a torn piece of fabric. The girl approached the boy, handing him a piece of bread she had taken from Ryan's store. Thank you, Amy, the little boy said eagerly, biting into the bread. Ryan felt a pang in his heart, realizing the gravity of the situation. These children were clearly struggling to survive. He withdrew, deciding that he couldn't simply be a silent bystander. Now, I ask you, how would you act in Ryan's place? Would you call the authorities, or would you just let the girl continue to take food from the aisles of your grocery store? As he looked at the old house and the children struggling to find moments of joy, a flood of memories rushed into Ryan's mind. The scene before him was a mirror of his own past, a reflection of the tough times he had faced. The house in front of him, with its peeling paint and neglected garden, vividly reminded him of his childhood home in a humble neighborhood in Pittsburgh. It was a small, cramped house, but it was filled with laughter and love, where he, his parents, and four siblings squeezed into tight spaces, but always found a reason to smile. He could hear his mother's laughter even after a long day of work as she prepared a modest meal for the family, and his father's proud smile whenever Ryan brought home good grades from school, dreaming that his son might have a better future. Ryan, his father's voice echoed in his mind, never forget where you came from, no matter how high you climb. Remember the roots that sustain you. He remembered helping his mother in the kitchen, the trips to the local market where, with just a few coins, they tried to get the best deal to feed the family. Ryan often went to the market not to buy, but to collect the leftovers that were discarded. It was there that he dreamed of having his own store, where no one would leave hungry. Years of struggle and determination had led him to open his grocery store. Every brick, every shelf, was a testament to his resilience and the love and support of his family. With moist eyes and a heavy heart, Ryan murmured to himself, I know what it's like to be in their shoes. I know what it's like to feel hungry, to feel cold. And I promise Dad I'll never forget. Ryan's silent commitment to his past strengthened his resolve. He knew he needed to help those children in some way. It was more than an obligation, it was a call from his heart. It was time to take action. Ryan approached the entrance of the house with hesitant steps, the sounds of innocent laughter and play mixing with echoes of his own childhood. He gently knocked on the weathered door, silence briefly taking hold before being interrupted by the cautious face of Amy peering through a crack. Her eyes, usually bright, now reflected a mixture of fear and suspicion. Why are you here? The girl asked with her trembling yet firm voice. Ryan, realizing her hesitation, made an effort to maintain a friendly and reassuring demeanor. I just want to talk. I'm not here to hurt you or cause trouble. What's your name? Then, the little girl replied, my name is Amy. Amy glanced around as if searching for an escape route. Are you going to call the police? They'll take us away, won't they? Ryan shook his head, his eyes filled with sincerity. No, Amy, I promise. I just want to understand and, if possible, help. Please believe me. There was a long silence as Amy assessed the sincerity in Ryan's words. She seemed to be in conflict, torn between the need to protect her brother and the hope that maybe, just maybe, Ryan could be someone to trust. Finally, she sighed, opening the door wider. Okay, but don't do anything stupid. I'm just... I'm just trying to take care of my brother. Ryan nodded, entering the house cautiously. I understand, Amy, and I appreciate you trusting me, even if just a little. Let's find a way to make all of this better together. Inside the residence, the scent of a simple meal filled the air, and the sound of little giggles could be heard from another room. Ryan realized that while the house was weathered, there was an undeniable sense of home, something he wanted to preserve and strengthen for Amy and her brother. 
The entrance of the residence revealed a room that, although sparse in furniture, told stories of resilience and determination. The wooden floor creaked with every step, and every corner of the room seemed to echo the laughter and tears of those who lived there. The furniture, though simple, was meticulously organized, showing the effort to maintain some sense of normalcy. Faded photos adorned a small shelf, displaying happier moments with a smiling woman holding Amy and a young boy in her arms. The daylight filtering through the worn curtains revealed traces of dust in the air. As Ryan ventured further into the house, a heavy silence settled in. Behind a partially open door, he found a darkened bedroom. There, under worn blankets, lay a woman, her pale skin contrasting with the sheets. Her breathing was weak and irregular, and her eyes, though tired, shone with a mix of recognition and resignation. Amy, she whispered with difficulty, assuming the figure at the door was her daughter. No, Ryan replied softly, approaching, my name is Ryan. I own the grocery store where Amy, well, where she has been seeking some food. The woman closed her eyes momentarily, taking in the information. So, you know, she murmured. You know, I'm trying my best, but I fear my best may not be enough. Touched by the woman's sincerity, Ryan sat down beside her. I want to help in any way I can. With visible effort, the woman reached under her pillow, retrieving a crumpled envelope. This is all I have, she said, handing it to Ryan. I've worked hard for every penny. If something happens to me, please ensure that Amy and her brother are taken care of. Ryan then told the woman that he would call an ambulance to help her, as she was too weakened. However, the woman told him not to do it, as it would only deplete the little money she had left for her children, and it wouldn't make much of a difference since she didn't have much time left. Ryan held the envelope, feeling the weight of the responsibility being placed upon him. I promise, he whispered, holding the woman's hand they will be safe. The room was enveloped in a peaceful silence, punctuated only by the gentle sound of the mother's breathing. Twilight cast soft shadows through the window, bathing the room in golden hues. Amy sat by the bedside, holding her mother's frail hand, while her little brother was nestled close, his eyes filled with confusion and sadness. The mother, with evident effort, turned to face Amy, her eyes reflecting love and pain in equal measure. My dear, she began, her voice weak but clear, there will be nights when you'll feel alone, nights when the world will seem too big and scary. But I want you to promise me something. Amy, fighting back tears, nodded. Anything you want, Mom. The mother raised her free hand and pointed to the window. Every night, look at the stars. Even on the darkest nights, there will be at least one star shining for you. And know that I'll be there watching over you and your brother, making sure you're safe. The boy, clutching the bedsheet, asked innocently, Will you be a star, Mom? She smiled, caressing his face. Yes, my love, a star that will always be with you, no matter what or where. Ryan, who had remained quietly in the background of the room, felt a wave of emotion. The love and strength of that woman, even on the brink of death, was something he would never forget. Her determination to ensure that her children felt her love and protection even after her departure touched the depths of his soul. Amy, tears streaming down her face, nodded. I promise, Mom. I'll look for you every night. The mother smiled weakly, her energy waning. And I'll be there, my dear, always. In that moment of farewell, Ryan's heart was filled with a mixture of sadness and admiration. He knew he had to do everything to honor the last wish of that brave mother. Dawn brought with it a somber quietude that seemed to envelop the entire house. The birdsong, usually a cheerful serenade, sounded distant and this time, melancholic. When Ryan entered the room, he found Amy and her little brother sitting silently by the bedside, their tiny hands intertwined, gazing at their mother's peaceful figure. Amy looked up her eyes swollen from tears, and whispered, She's gone, Mr. Ryan. Ryan, swallowing the lump in his throat, approached and placed a comforting hand on her shoulder. I'm so sorry, Amy. The boy, with the innocence of youth, asked, Is she a star now? Ryan nodded. Yes, she's watching over you both now, just as she promised. 
Ryan took the opportunity to ask for Amy's brother's name. The boy replied, my name is Jake. After the death of Amy and Jake's mother, what would you do in Ryan's place? Would you call Child Protective Services? Would you call the police? Would you take the children to your home? Please share your opinion in the comments. Knowing that the house now held many painful memories, Ryan made a decision. Come on, I'll take you to town. You and your brother shouldn't be here alone. As they prepared to leave, Ryan couldn't help but think of his own wife, Miranda. The journey through the town brought vivid memories of the day they lost their unborn child. He could remember the sparkle in Miranda's eyes as she placed her hand on her belly, talking about the dreams and hopes she had for their son. The pain of that loss had never disappeared, it had only become more bearable with time. Seeing the children walking beside him, a maternal feeling he never expected to experience began to bloom. The responsibility, the desire to protect and care for them, was overwhelming. Amy, noticing Ryan's thoughtful expression, asked, Are you okay, Mr. Ryan? He smiled gently. I am, dear, just remembering some things. I promise to take care of you and your brother, just as I would my own child. And as they moved down the road, Ryan felt that somehow, he was taking a step toward healing, both for himself and for the two children who now depended on him. As they approached the house, Ryan felt a growing nervousness in his stomach. He knew that the unexpected arrival of two children would be a surprise for his wife, Miranda. The shadow of their previous loss still cast a veil over their home, and introducing two young souls into their world could be a double-edged sword. The front door slowly opened, and Miranda, with her blonde hair tied in a bun, wearing a kitchen apron, looked at Ryan and then at the two children by his side. Her eyes expressed surprise, confusion, and a hint of resistance. Ryan, she began, her voice hesitant, what's going on? Ryan took a deep breath. Miranda, these are Amy and her little brother, Jake. They need us. Miranda approached, studying the children. Amy, sensing the uncertainty in Miranda's gaze, said timidly, We don't want to cause trouble, ma'am. We just needed a place to stay. Miranda's heart ached at Amy's words. She knelt down, getting eye level with the children. It's not about causing trouble, dear, it's just unexpected. Ryan, approaching, enveloped his wife in a hug. I remember when we used to dream of our home filled with children's laughter, of love. I know it still hurts, Miranda, but maybe this is a sign, a chance to heal and love again. Miranda, with tears in her eyes, looked at Amy and Jake, seeing in them the possibility of a fresh start. Maybe you're right, she whispered. In the weeks that followed, the once silent house filled with painful memories was now filled with laughter, play, and love. The decision became clear to Ryan and Miranda, they would adopt Amy and Jake, making them a permanent part of their family. And so, a new chapter began for all of them, a chapter of hope, love, and renewal. The weeks following Amy and Jake's arrival were filled with diligence and determination. Ryan and Miranda worked tirelessly to try to find any trace of relatives who could care for the children. They visited homes in the neighborhood, spoke with community leaders, and even searched local records, all in search of some distant relative who could provide a home for Amy and Jake. On a particularly exhausting night, after hours of research and making calls, Miranda collapsed on the living room couch, a look of frustration on her face. Ryan, it seems like we've hit a dead end. I can't find any information about their family. Ryan, massaging her tired feet, agreed, I know, dear. I haven't had any luck either. It seems their mother really was alone in the world with these two children. Amy, who had overheard the conversation while hiding behind the door, entered the room hesitantly. Mr. Ryan, Mrs. Miranda, she began, her voice trembling, Jake and I, we don't want to be a burden. If you can't find our family, we'll understand. Miranda, with tears in her eyes, quickly got up and hugged Amy. Oh, dear, you would never be a burden to us. We just want what's best for you. Ryan nodded, joining the embrace. It settled then. If we can't find your family, we'll do whatever it takes to officially make you part of ours. 
With that decision made, they began the adoption process, which proved to be an emotional roller coaster filled with paperwork, visits from social workers, and court hearings. But Ryan and Miranda faced each challenge with unwavering determination and love for the children. And finally, after months of uncertainty and hope, the day arrived in a local courtroom with a smiling judge. Ryan and Miranda signed the final papers, making Amy and Jake their legally adopted children. Leaving the courthouse with the documents in hand, Ryan looked at his newly formed family and whispered, We're finally whole. And embraced under the clear sky, they began a new chapter in their lives together. Ryan and Miranda's home, which once echoed with the silent sounds of melancholy, now buzzed with the boundless energy of two children. Amy's joyful laughter, Jake's curious humming as he explored every corner of the house, and the constant chatter and play filled the hallways and rooms. On a sunny afternoon, as Ryan watched Amy and Jake playing in the garden, Miranda approached, wrapping her arm around his waist. Have you ever stopped to think, she whispered, how life has funny ways of showing us the way when we least expect it? Ryan smiled, squeezing Miranda's hand. Every time I look at them, I feel like a missing piece in our lives has been filled. As if the universe is telling us that even in the toughest circumstances, there is hope and love. Miranda nodded, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. I remember how the house used to feel empty, how every corner seemed to remind us of what we lost. But now, with Amy and Jake, I feel like love is everywhere. They brought us back to life. Jake, running after a butterfly, shouted, Look, Mom. Look what I found. His words, so simple and full of joy, touched the couple's hearts. It was evident that Jake already saw them as his parents. Amy joining them, took Ryan and Miranda's hands. Thank you, she whispered, for giving us a home, for giving us love. Ryan and Miranda exchanged glances, feeling a wave of gratitude. The arrival of Amy and Jake not only filled the void in their lives, but also taught them about the resilience of the human spirit and the boundless capacity of the heart to love. Together, the four of them were more than just a family, they were a living testament to the transformation of despair into hope, of sadness into joy. Thank you for joining us today on Deep Stories. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video.